Okay, we're, we're going to narrow it down here. I've got uh, up four of the questions. I'll try to ask as quickly as possible. They're, I don't think they're really complex. So if you can answer them quickly, we'll get out of here. We have one big one at the end. But uh, uh, the question is, uh, do you think Calvary County needs a community college? And if so, what do you do to help get one there? Yes, I believe we need a community college uh, here closer. Uh, kids from West Point drive all the way over to Columbia. That's an hour and a half uh, for them. Uh, how do you do that? How do the kids do that on a student budget? The gas alone is killing them. Uh, I think the Resource Center told me that 63% uh, of our young women have no higher than a 12th grade education. That's pretty sad. And a lot of that problem is the access to the colleges. Uh, we have a, a low-income county, and it's hard for these kids to, to get to college campuses. I've been uh, in communication with uh, Mr. Sheely, who is the new interim president of uh, CSU Stanislaus. I'm talking with him about setting up a video classroom, uh, live video feed, not, not internet taped uh, classrooms. Uh, it's an approach that we can bring in possibly at a low cost. All we need is a classroom and the equipment. So I think that's one approach that we can look at. Uh, Delta College is, is trying to do a lot of stuff with uh, video classrooms, uh, internet classrooms and stuff. The uh, live video feed classroom is a different technique for the teachers to teach. And so it's, it's a little bit struggle to, to help them learn how to do that and what would be for the students to, to interact with the, the teachers over video. But it, it is a possibility. We need to do something to get our kids better educated. And not just with uh, college degrees, but with uh, trade skills. Uh, let's look at uh, what we do here in the county, the timber industry, welding, machining. There's a lot of talents here in this county that we can take advantage of if we, if we put in some programs that will help teach our kids those skills. And with those skills and with the education, hopefully they can stay here. Our biggest export is our kids. We need to change that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, we definitely need a community college here. And, um, you know, we're really, we're closer than, than a lot of people realize. Um, you know, I know with Dave Tanner, who's running for the, the Delta Board of Trustees, um, and although we disagree on, on some things, um, we do find common ground uh, with trying to develop a community college, especially down in Valley Springs. Uh, we can get um, some, we can get some people uh, on the right, on the board there. We can move a lot closer uh, to making this happen. I realize that, that you know other people who've been involved with this process for a while, um, you may have uh, reached the burnout stage and, and don't realize that we still have a possibility of making this happen. And, and we may not make it happen right away, uh, but I will work hard to, to see that I do whatever I can as a supervisor to make it happen. Uh, in the meantime, we can look at opening up classes, uh, satellite classes, uh, like at the hospital or, or other places uh, throughout the county, so we can have these classes ongoing while we work out the more complicated question of building a community college. Um, and, I, and I think uh, vocational training is, is absolutely critical. Uh, we used to have really good vocational training throughout our school curriculum, and, and we need to, to really look at that and push that again. There's funding opportunities out there to bring in teachers. We need to look at those funding opportunities to make that happen. Uh, without a good educational system, we really we don't have anything. Um, and, and if we want to rebuild our rural economy, we have to have a proper educational system. And a component of that is a community college in the long term. Um, and so I think that, that it's really important to emphasize also that we have, we have some excellent schools right now. In Railroad Flat, West Point, we need to keep those open and work hard to, to make sure they get funding. And I will do that as supervisor because our kids deserve the very best education. Thank you. Just uh, if you'll just bear with me, I know we said we quit at seven forty-five. Um, I just have a couple more questions, if that's okay with everybody. Um, I'm going to actually ask uh, three questions. I think they're fairly simple. Um, I think you'll be able to do it in two minutes uh, uh, time allotted. Uh, do you favor uh, an attempt to have a local meat processing plant in our area? Is one question. Um, uh, what what is your uh, proposal or view on the noise ordinance? And the third is, what is your position on the state's fire protection fee? Uh, 
Yes, I support a meat processing plant in the area. I know the uh, Criddles, I'm not sure. Criddles, too, sorry, I knew Criddle wasn't right. I know they've been working hard on that. Uh, I went to one of the shareholder meetings uh, months ago and they were putting a lot of effort into it and I hope they can make it work. They're, they're after a niche market, grass-fed beef, and uh, I, hope, I hope you can make that work. That would be, uh, be great, bring in local jobs. Uh, I'm for any local job. Uh, there's things the county can do to help that, make sure that we get them uh, in the right zoning and, and land use designation. Uh, the fire fee tax, I don't, I don't know anyone that likes that. Uh, they snuck it in on us without our uh, vote on it. Uh, I think it's a shame the way they did that. Uh, go to the Howard Jarvis website and they'll show you how to fill out a form and, and mail it in with your your fee, not your tax, and uh, hopefully get a refund when they fight that. And noise ordinance? Noise ordinance. I was at the board meetings when they're going back and forth on this, and to me, another law is not what we need. Um, I understand the, what the sheriff department was after. They're after some teeth in uh, responding to these problems. Uh, we. You know, at the board meeting, they mentioned we've gone 112 years without a noise ordinance in our county, and now we have to have a noise ordinance. Uh, it's too bad that we can't just get along and, uh, and deal with each other. Uh, the way they put the noise ordinance in, it's very restrictive. Uh, the decibel level, I think, was, I think they bumped it from 80 up to 85. Uh, how do they get to measure that? It's, it's going to be tough. And once it's on the books, Someone complains the sheriff department's got to go out and enforce it. So I, I oppose the noise ordinance. Chris, do you want to come back? The noise ordinance, fire protection, feed, meat processing. Uh, yeah, the, the, the meat processing facility, absolutely. Uh, we have to, uh, you know, we really have to really uh, get our uh, rural economy going again. I mentioned that several times. And that's just a perfect example of what we can do locally to improve our economy while really. Uh, building on our heritage, our heritage economy uh, is, is right in line with that. So I'll do uh, whatever I can to, uh, to help uh, the funding continue uh, to make it go from where it is now to uh, being open and operational. Uh, as far as the noise ordinance, you know, unfortunately, um, there's more than 12,000 people that live in the county now. Um, and there's a lot of people that live, uh, that come to visit and recreate uh, that do not have the same uh, type of sensitivity that we all have as far as, you know, being nice to our neighbors. Um, so having a noise ordinance uh, that, that we have set aside makes a lot of sense to me. It's just part of the rational planning process, uh, especially when you have a sheriff coming to the board going, it would be really nice if I could uh, have something like this so I could help, you know, keep the peace. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to definitely side with the sheriff on, on that one. Uh, and as far as the fire tax, uh, yeah, it makes no sense. I've, you know, put out flyers to everybody in the district, alerting them to it, uh, just in case you missed it. Uh, you can go to my website and, and there's uh, documents on there tell you how to appeal it um, after you pay it. Uh, but if that timeline is really closing now, a uh, 30-day period when you, when you received it. Uh, so, so definitely check that out. Um, Tim Laddish, one of my uh, campaign uh, uh, helpers there, uh, has wrote up a great thing. He actually has one copy left uh, if, you, if you don't have high-speed internet. Uh, and we can pass that off to you or we can get you more copies. So, uh, yeah, it, it makes no sense. Everybody wants to protect uh, and have Cal Fire be funded, but we need to do it in a fair way, uh, make everybody throughout the state pay for it, not us uh, up here in Calaveras County and throughout the rural area alone. So, thank you very much. Uh, just as it was when we did the District 1 uh, candidates forum, the, the majority of questions were about job creation. I think that, you know, it's an accepted uh, reality that we have 20% unemployment in the county, uh, real unemployment. We have, uh, you know, where our schools are in jeopardy of closing, uh, our public services lacking, and, uh, you know, it's all tied to a lack of economy. So, with this handful of questions, I'm just going to ask one, one, one question, and that's, give... Give us three specific things that you'll do as supervisor to increase jobs. Yeah, that gets right back to where I, I opened up with. Um, you know, we we live in an amazing, rich area, and and we have a lot of wealth 
surrounding us, and we just have to capitalize on that. And so specifically, uh, I think we need to get a good economic development element for our uh, general plan update. And we can do that in this room and with the leaders throughout the county. We don't need to hire some outside consultant and spend a lot of money. We all have the expertise to, to really write out a good economic element. And within that economic element, we're going to have tourism. And we're going to have, how are we going to market our tourism? How are we going to market our local communities, our local environments, so people come here, spend money, and go home? That's one of the things uh, that I would definitely be working on. Second, in that ec economic element, we need to work on uh, infrastructure and infrastructure planning. We need to make sure we have the, the infrastructure where we want our development to happen. That is how you get a target, or that is how you even have a McDonald's, or even a jail, for that matter. I mean, we were struggling with providing services to our jail in our government center. So within our economic development, we need to have make sure we have infrastructure planning so we, we can build upon our economy. And, and finally, uh, you know, we really just need to keep working on uh, increasing the revenue and industries around our natural resources, especially the forest. How do we get more mills uh, in, into the community that we once had thriving mills throughout? Uh, how do we build on our ag, our rich ranch land out there? Uh, these are are very important things and they, and they need to be looked at and they need to be put into the economic element and then as uh, Bryce mentioned earlier, let's have it as an agenda item. We can, look, we can talk about it each and every day uh, that we meet um, to make sure we're doing everything possible to improve our economy uh, here in District 2 and the county. I'm glad you liked my idea, Chris. <laughs> Yes, let's get an agenda item where we talk about it. Uh, let's get the general plan done, and let's look at uh, the talents and resources that we have here. The meeting that Chris mentioned earlier that happened here was actually two weeks ago, and there's one tonight uh, down in, uh, I think, at the Senior Center in San Andreas. It's not with Boeing. There's a manufacturer of a machine shop down in Hayward that does tooling for a number of different airlines. It's not, it's not Boeing. It's a machine shop down there. Uh, that partner uh, now lives here in Moak Hill, and he moved his family here. What he uh, would like to do is bring uh, a uh, military version of that tooling up here and put the machine shops here to work uh, producing that tooling. Uh, he said, I was at the meeting two weeks ago right here, he said that uh, in the first year he can bring $15 million of business right here in our county. Uh, we'll see if that happens. They've got to put together an organization, and I think there's some great potential there. Uh, the tooling for the airplanes is, uh, it's not parts on the airplane, it's the tooling that helps service the plane. And for a big airplane like the 787, there's $10 million worth of tooling per plane. Uh, he says that there's the, the, the jobs are there, the work's there, we just got a, an air eventual plan is to build a, a plant and uh, bring those local machinists in to work for them. Uh, some people like their independence, some of them will come, some of them won't, but it's a, it's a great potential. And that's the type of stuff that we need to jump on and, and help facilitate. Uh, we cannot increase our tax base without increasing our economic base uh, unless we raise taxes. So agenda, uh, get the uh, agenda item on the board, a permanent agenda item, uh, let's get the general plan done and let's go after these businesses and opportunities to develop business here in our county. Okay, if we uh, could just have a two minute closing uh, statement and then we'll wrap up. Again, thank you for coming. Um, I worked my tail off so far and I know Chris has been working hard too. Uh, I've been to every board meeting since December except one. I've been to COD meetings, LAFCO meetings, water board meetings, uh, IHSS meetings, school board meetings. Uh, I've been doing everything I can to understand as much as I can uh, throughout the county. I mentioned that I tried to visit with all the business owners. I tried to uh, meet with the department heads and the sheriff's department and understand the, the frustrations there. Uh, with meth problem, we can do a four-prong attack. Uh, we can go after uh, the drug users with more uh, deputies. Let's work with the, uh, the programs uh, like uh, Courage to Life, I think it's called. The Courage to Change, sorry. That's a program that's volunteer and uh, it makes a difference. The court uh, 
mandated programs, you know, that they have to go to, they don't work. Um, uh, let's get neighborhood watches going, and let's educate our, our kids on, on the, the dangers of meth and how ugly it is. Um, I've got uh, 30 years business experience, 27 in the high tech, 3 in my local business. I'm new to the county, but I don't have an agenda to work from. I, I want to work for you. Uh, Chris works for the executive for the Foothill Conservancy. He cannot divorce himself from their agenda, and I'm different that way. I, I can do what you want me to do. Thank you again for coming. All right. Well, hey, thanks, Bryce, for uh, being here. I really appreciate that. Uh, and welcome to the neighborhood, by the way. Uh, so I uh, I grew up here, and you know I also did spend time in Amherst County, so I don't hold that against you. Um, and and I'll tell you one thing, uh, I am an independent person, and I will listen to everybody in this room and make an informed decision based upon what I think is right, listening to you. There is nobody, not the photo conservancy, not the Republican Party, nobody, Bryce, that I will listen to more than my constituents out here. And I just make that very clear, because I'm very passionate about this community. I, I swam in the pool down there uh, at the Hotel Leger. I explored the, the caves here in Moak Hill. I swam in the river. I cut wood, my firewood. I killed my first deer in this district. I am very passionate about it, and I will do whatever it takes to make it a better place for myself and my family and all of you. And I will work tirelessly, just as Steve Walensky has done. I will work just as hard to make this place a better place for all of us. And, and I really, I'm going to be out in the community knocking on your doors. I've been out trying to hit every door that I can find, uh, which is very challenging. I want to hear from you. I want to have your discussion. I'm not concerned about ideologies. There is a place for people that believe the environment is important. There is a place for everybody at the table, including Republicans, Libertarians, Democrats, across the board. This is a nonpartisan race. And I will listen to every idea. And there's a lot of good ideas. If we get tied up and say, you're an environmentalist or you're a conservative, and then we, we, we tear our community apart, we leave 50% of it behind. We have to work together across party lines to make the changes we need to have happen here in the community. And uh, I just really encourage you to vote for me on November 6th and work together. Because it doesn't matter if I win this election. Uh, I'm going to still be working to help this community, as Bryce will be continuing to work to help this community. It's about making it better. Well, I just want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, uh, you know, this is probably the first time you guys have come down to McCullough Hill downtown and not had to work, so that's a good thing. <laughs> but uh, I really, uh, I just want to say on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce, uh, I'm, I'm really optimistic. We've had two of these candidates forums, and I'll tell you that you know I thought we uh, the questions from the from the chamber and from the audiences were were uh, solid questions that were important issues in Calaveras County. Uh, a lot of these candidate forums are not like that. Um, I have a great respect for all the candidates that are running right now. As I said before, I hope people would go out and seek office in higher regard. Uh, this was a terrific debate, gentlemen. Thank you so much. I appreciate the civility and, and the compassion for the community. And, and I just want to lastly thank our uh, Executive Director of the Chamber, Diane Gray. Uh, feel free. Feel free to uh, give an application to join the Chamber. And I also want to thank Gary Stevens for helping me with the time tonight. Anyway, enjoy your evening. We have some uh, cookies. And uh, uh, from what I understand, Paul Stein is going to have a full bar uh, across the street. So, with that, thank you all very much.